good team win. Um, certainly, uh, defensively in particular, I uh, thought our guys were outstanding. They challenged you to play disciplined football. I thought our guys communicated well, certainly got aligned correctly. Uh, and for the most part, we tackle well. You know, I think um, they had 90 yards, I think, at the half. And we really gave them a couple cheap scores uh, with the muff punts uh, and an undisciplined horse collar penalty. So, um, you know, really proud of the defense and the progress that they continue to make. Coach Roberts and his uh, crew have done a really good job. Uh, we've made significant improvement. Um, and then, you know, you start looking at offense. We rushed the ball and threw the ball effectively. We basically met every goal that we have uh, outside of the points total. Uh, and that was a little bit of a product of only having four possessions in the first half. Uh, but, you know, special teams, we've got some things we need to clean up. Um, um, but I do think that there was a lot of positives in terms of what we did on special teams. We just got a couple of technical errors and we need to clean up. Uh, but overall, I think what we found out about our team is that we've got – we're made of the right stuff. Uh, we made plays at critical times. I think the chemistry of the team, the togetherness of the team – um, showed up, uh, and even though we probably could have got that game under control a little quicker, uh, I think the back and forth, third and fourth quarters created opportunities for our guys to really kind of galvanize them, troop, you know, and I think you could sense that in the locker room after the game. So that's a, that's a good football team. Um, I think Coach Lunsford uh, and his team continue to get better each and every week. Uh, and what a place, you know, tremendous history, tradition. Uh, certainly uh, for me going back there was, um, you know, they've, they've really invested in that place and made it a better place, and their fans showed up, and it was a terrific atmosphere. So good team win, and uh, certainly great to open conference play. Uh, and, you know, we'll turn the page and start getting ready for a team that we're all very familiar with. Uh, Appalachian State's uh, got a veteran group coming back. that ha They do have a new staff. Four of the ten are holdovers from the previous staff. Uh, but very impressed with what I see so far. Very explosive on offense, very disruptive on defense, and solid in the kicking game. So, you know, I think it's a maybe a 10-day window here to get ready. Um, we've got a plan, and we're going to execute the plan. Um, and we look forward to competing against them again. It's been a battle each and every time. And certainly for UL, um, you know, terrific opportunity. We're going to play on national television. Um, and that's what I would say, you know, I, I think it's it's time, you know, for people to show up, you know, and, and really make a statement about how committed we are, you know. Um, this is a group of young men and a, and a time that, you know, I think that, you know, we're going to play on national television on and ESPN2 and the type of atmosphere that we can create. You know, I, I think our fans realize this, but they can impact the game. Um, and we certainly have made progress there. Each and every home game so far this season has gotten better and better. But Wednesday night, you know, our students, our fans – uh, against a terrific opponent on a national stage. It doesn't get much better than that. So uh, we're excited uh, about the preparation uh, and look forward to each and every step along the way here to get ready for this one. So what questions do we have? How much trips to Boone last year? How much has that been mm -hmm. everybody's mind, even though obviously we're trying to focus on this one somehow, but we have not seen that. Sure. I mean, I think, uh, you know, those were – Terrific football games, you know, and certainly I think the first one in particular was a big – we kind of grew up, in my opinion. I think we realized that we were different at that point in time, and that led to a string of events and games and improvement. Um, and, you know, I was proud of the way our kids competed in the championship game against that. I thought we played tough. I thought we were physical. I thought we competed in the game. Certainly didn't go the way we wanted it to. But, um, you know, that's in the past – that will have nothing to do with what happens next Wednesday. Um, you know, I think our players are going to have – there's something that goes when you play a team twice and you come up short and you have to go to their place. Uh, there are certain things that go with that. Uh, but we'll need to channel our energy and focus on every opportunity that we have to prepare between now and then. Coach, I had a, a bye week. Is this like the perfect time to have it before playing App State or do you feel like it's a time to mess up the momentum? 
No, I, I, I think that both teams have equal amount of time to prepare. You know, certainly uh, these are – these are the things that go with success in this league. You know, if, if you start to gain a little bit of respect, you get an opportunity to play on national television. Um, you know, and this is a great matchup. I mean, this is uh, two teams that played twice last year, rematch of the championship game last year. So uh, there's a reason why ESPN and the Sunbelt Conference selected the game to be on national television. So I think we view it as opportunity, you know, and certainly we'll take a couple extra days to prepare for a really good team, and we're going to need that extra time. How much different does prep look like with the game being on Wednesday? Like, oh, I know you're a typical game. Sure. Monday, Tuesday. How is it different with the game being on Wednesday? Yeah, you're going to get basically um, a couple extra practices on the opponent. You know, we're going to uh, try to take advantage of the extra time as much as we can. Uh, we also have fall break on Thursday and Friday. Uh, this week, so there's no classes. Uh, so we're able to, you know, create a schedule that fits not only playing on Wednesday night, but also uh, giving our players a little bit of a mental break there uh, on Friday. So I think there's tons of positives to the way this is put together. And, uh, you know, we're going to we're gonna maximize our time regardless if we had five days uh, or if we're going to have 16, you know, that's the thing about what we're getting ready to encounter here is we've got 10-day turnaround, 8-day turnaround, 16-day uh, turnaround, and a 5-day turnaround. So we're getting ready to go to that non-traditional uh, format here over the next four weeks. So, But, um, you know, our entire attention is turned toward this one at this point in time. We did put up the schedule last night with the players and went through step by step what each day was going to look like uh, so that they have an indication of what, you know, I think that young people um, operate better when they know exactly what's coming, and we certainly wanted them to be familiar with with the plan. Where, where do you stand on the midweek games and those, you know, on Saturdays and over? Sure. Situation? Well, it, it is what it is. I mean, I think that, it's all perspective. It's how you look at it. You know, we view it as a tremendous positive. You know, uh, I think it's a – you're talking about uh, Wednesday night. Um, you're talking about national television, probably the only game on TV in the entire country in college football. Um, you know, and our fans, you know, they've got an opportunity to come out on a Wednesday night just like if Allie and I were going to dinner. You know, it's just the event of the evening, you know. And certainly, I think that uh, our students, our fans, have got a tremendous opportunity to represent this community, this university, and certainly get behind and support the team. Do you guys think we have a confidence uh, throughout the season? What are you seeing when you see him out there? And what needs to improve in order for you guys to come out on top feeling the Aztec game? Well, just incremental improvement, just like I think we saw him play one of his better games Saturday. And I thought in particular he played well at critical times. There was lots of downs in that game uh, where it's a one-score game and he made the play, you know. Um, and he had a great week. I thought he had his best week of practice and preparation uh, just from what I observed. And then, you know, the guy's a, really a first-year starter, so this is his chance to, you know, get experience and play better each and every week. And I think he would tell you that, He's tweaking his approach too. You know, he he's a competitor, uh, and he wants to do his best for his teammates. Uh, and he certainly has made improvement each and every week. And um, you know, it says a lot about a guy when he makes critical plays at critical times. And I think that's the type of guy he is. Coach, when you look at film, App is scoring a lot of points, but giving up more points than they normally. How much do you attribute that to? Is there any kind of Scheme, schematic changes, or is that just a transition in coaching? Sure. Staff? Well, I, you know, you don't ever know. You know, we're digging into the film right now as we speak, but I would say that um, it is a new staff and there's always transition. You know, I mean, even think about our football team last year, no matter what you inherit, um, I think that there's always going to be a little bit of an adjustment period. So uh, I do think that they're getting better, you know, uh, they went to North Carolina and beat the University of North Carolina, uh, which was a huge monumental 
um, game for them, certainly to beat a Power 5 team that this week played Clemson to a one-score one game, one-point game, and had a chance to go for two and win the game. So uh, we know this team. I mean, we know their players. We know the personnel. Uh, we're very familiar with them. And it's really a veteran team that's coming back. That's why they were picked to win their side of the division. They're picked to win the league and, you know, certainly – respected even nationally in terms of where they're at and what type of program they have. So we're very familiar with all the returning players, and uh, certainly they've got a new staff, but they, there's lots of uh, familiarity um, and similarities to, to what they did last year as well. Thank you. Thomas is the uh, returning um, Sunbelt Offensive Player of the Year. Um, what makes him such a dangerous well, he can he can get loose on you on the ground. You know, the guy can scramble. He can extend the plays. And they, you know, in the zone read quarterback run world, he's got enough finishing speed to where he can go the distance. So, um, you know, that that's that's a consensus amongst, you know, media and coaches in this league. The guy's not only an effective passer, I think he's improved as a passer in particular this year so far. So the numbers would reflect that. Um, and they've got a great group of skill players coming back as well at receiver, at tight end, at running back, four out of five offensive linemen. Uh, so this is a veteran group that's in a new system, uh, and certainly their head coach uh, is an accomplished play caller and coordinator on offense. So uh, they're, they've, got, they've got plenty of things that we'll have to prepare for. Had you – not fumbled any punts and not missed any field goals and won these games more comfortably like you've alluded to a few times. Um, do you believe in the concept of peaking too early or is there any positives that can come out of winning and yet not being perfect? Yeah, I think that's a great question. You know, I think we've benefited from the adversity that's been presented, if that makes sense. I think it's going to bode well for us going forward. Um, as a coach, you want to – eliminate that stuff as quickly as you can but does adversity presents opportunity you know struggle produces growth uh, so you find out a lot about your team these are on we're doing this on the road as well so it's a compound effect i think uh, but i do think we'll benefit from it you know but you like to you know play cleaner and eliminate some of these um you're kind of pulling out the pistol and shooting ourselves in the foot a couple times so um, you know, the, the tough matchups are coming, you know, starting with this one. So um, I think if we – going into the year, if you'd have told me, hey, you're going to go on the road and beat Ohio, you're going to beat Georgia Southern, we take it no matter what the numbers say. So we're where we need to be. You know, we're 4-1, and one, certainly won our first conference game, uh, and we're in position to host the former league champion – and uh, that's all that matters. You know, we're just going to turn the page and turn our entire attention to this this game, this mission, you know, different time, different location, and a little bit more time to prepare. So it's about making the most out of this amount of time and being the most prepared um, team that we can be when the game gets here. Related to that with special teams, might you continue to go back and forth with the kickers or do you want to – Settle on something there, and how does you know having short range can fix some too, but not necessarily sure. long range impact you know play calling and decision making, especially right. in a close game, and then also you know are you going to open it up with punt return or are you going to stick with the guy? Well, I think um, the kicker question is a great question, and I think we'll just continue to evaluate that. I think it's to be determined um, based off of practice production. I certainly got both guys did a little bit of good, a little bit of bad the other day. And, uh, you know, I think we just got to continue to evaluate, come up with the best solutions that we can. It does affect you as a play caller, and you certainly saw that on Saturday. You know, so, um, you know, I also think that Eric's had tremendous success so far this year as well. And the first uh, – incident that he had Saturday was a misalignment issue. Guy was aligned six yards too deep, uh, not only vertically, but also horizontally. Didn't adjust the gunners over. So, um, 
you know, he's very capable. And you can see he made a great decision later in the game. The one hopper that he fielded, he got a 12-yard return, which was a big deal. So he's a confident player and a guy that we've got uh, all the trust in the world in. So we'll stay with Eric, and, and certainly uh, the kicker deal is to be determined. How many in the punt return game, how many options are there? Or is there time to discuss them and mean like, okay, I want a fair catch this. I sure. Want to take a chance here and be yeah. risky, or I want to be real conservative here, based on how your offense is moving the ball in the game condition. Well, I that that's a great question. I think that uh, a lot of it has to do with the call. You know, what are what is the the play that we're running on the punt return? Are we rushing the punt? Are we in a hold up situation? Um, what's the clock, how much time's on the clock. I mean, there's all, all types of things. But for the most part, our goal is to get a first down. You know, we want to get the punt caught. That's the number one objective. Maintain possession of the ball. And in a perfect world, we, get, we tack 10 on and we get a first down out of the play. Um, so those are, those are kind of the ways – that's the way that we approach it, if that makes sense. Uh, but I do think you're right. You know, there are certain scenarios where the clock is sensitive and you just want to fair catch the ball. Sometimes you may have a max block on and, you know, they're going to have uh, – you're going to have no blockers and you fair catch the ball. But in general, catching the punt is the most important thing. You know, let's eliminate the ball hitting the ground and rolling. Um, you know, let's maintain possession of the ball. And then certainly if all things are um, equal, let's try to go get a first down. You know, let's not forget the fact that we've had two punts, really three, uh, significant punt returns that have been called back this year. You know, so that's an area of our team where I think we have good personnel. Good, you know, we're, we're executing at a high level. We've worked really hard on it, and we're creating some explosive play. So we don't want to take that away by going conservative here. You know, our attitude is let's be aggressive in everything that we do, uh, and punt return is no different. Yeah, I mean, I think Jock is um, a great representative of this place in our team. I think he's one of the most improved players on our team. I think he's he's improved in all areas. He's bigger, faster, quicker. I think he's a better um, student of the game. I think his football IQ is improved. Uh, therefore, he's a better communicator. Uh, he anticipates plays faster, and I think he's improved fundamentally. So. Uh, he's in year two in the same defensive system, you know, which is just, that could be said for a lot of the players on our defensive team, you know. So, you know, when you start banking reps and you go in the same things and you're hearing the same calls and you're hearing the same fundamentals, the same adjustments two years in a row, which for this group of defensive players that are veterans, that hasn't been the case for a while, um, I think that you benefit from that. Uh, I also think in the game against Southern, players around Jock played well too. The defensive front did a great job taking on blockers, uh, two for one in a lot of instances. And he was in position and he capitalized and made the plays uh, and certainly created some negative plays in the game. So uh, very, very proud of Jock uh, in terms of the improvement that he's made and the leadership that he's shown. Well, it's what no one's talking about. I know we've we've got all these um, offensive numbers that people continue to talk about, but defensively, uh, we've made tremendous progress, uh, and certainly we've added some quality pieces. Uh, but we've also acquired knowledge. We're playing smarter. Uh, we're better fundamentally. We're covering better, tackling better, striking blockers better. Uh, the effort, pursuit, and speed is better. Uh, so we're. You know, we're a much improved team. You know, I would say a lot of that has to do with the defensive progress that we've made, you know. Um, so, you know, we're going to continue to improve as well there, I think, as those guys, some of those young players that are playing over there, as they gain experience and develop more confidence, uh, we're going to be able to play more guys, be fresher. Um, and our expectation and standard over there won't, won't be compromised. Mentioned 
already has nine touchdowns and is Ryan Whitney been the such a horse in the backfield? Well, we know the guy. I think he's the if I'm not mistaken, he ran a kickoff back against us last year, uh the first one of the game. So we're, we're we know exactly who he is and uh you know, there's no question why he's having production. They're feeding him the ball. And he's a very talented runner that's got good players around him. Uh, and certainly, when given opportunities, he can make plays. So, we know exactly what we're getting into there. Final question for Coach. The, the, the players, I mean, they know this is a – they've done a lot, made a lot of progress in a year and a half. But this is like fast track make progress if you win this game. Never beaten this team. Yeah, I mean, I think it's, uh, you know, I mean, it is what it is. You know, I think what we got to make sure that we all understand here is that uh, regardless of the external things that affect, you know, that everybody's going to be talking about over the next uh, eight, nine days, we got to be fully present and in the moment and maximize all the things that are going to affect how we play, Okay. And uh, we can to sit around and talk about all that stuff if we want to, but it's going to have nothing to do with what's happening on Saturday night out there on Cajun Field. So, you know, that's where our focus and attention needs to be. Um, and certainly, you know, you relish these opportunities if you're a great competitor. And certainly I think we've got some young men that are becoming great competitors as we speak.